Hello, thank you for joining me today. Um, this is the first video of this kind that I've done and I'm really excited to do it. Um, so basically, I love nature photography. I love nature and I love creating things. So nature photography was an obvious choice of hobby, like career pursuits. I studied at a university. So yeah, nature photography is a big part of my life. Um, one of the main reasons I wanted to do it in the first place was to share my photos and show other people why I found nature like just so incredibly amazing and brilliant because it just is. Um, but a lot of the times, you know, in a hectic day, busy schedules, we can easily walk past all these amazing things. And when I'm out with the camera, I can slow down and really appreciate what's there. And I like to, to show other people and point it out because like that's my favourite thing about photographers and being a photographer is everyone, no matter what you're photographing, we're all just looking at stuff and going, hey, this is amazing. And then we're like taking a picture going, this is amazing. And then we post it or we like print it and show other people just to say, this is amazing. <laughs> and that's why I just, I love photography and nature photography. So um, the issue with being a nature photographer, I think specifically, is that we like being outdoors and in the action. And I personally find it really hard to sit down at a desk, especially when I work at a desk anyway. But I, yeah, I find it really hard to sit down at a desk and sh just edit and share my photos. But I'm trying to get into a better routine of it. Um, I started doing blogs, so I've been sharing the, um, I've been, I've been sharing the photos I take each month on a blog, but again, it's so much typing, it's so much screen time. So I'm going to try YouTube videos. Um, thank you if you're still here, because I know this is a long-winded explanation to just tell you what this video is, but I thought it'd be good to give it a little bit of context. Um, so yeah, I'll get into it now, basically. Um, yeah, so... I'm just going to go through some pictures that I've taken in the month of August. I recently relocated to the coast. Um, I say recently, that's recently in terms of like the last few years I've been away. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm back in the UK coastline, back on the UK coastline. And I've been exploring my local area this month and it's been brilliant. So this, these are first of all some pictures from the first walk I did with my camera here. And it was, the Chalk Hill Blues were just everywhere. So this is on a cliff right by the sea. And these guys, they were just everywhere. They were mating. So I realised um, this is why they were being so active. So here we've got the female on top and the male underneath. And they are, yeah, making a new generation of butterflies. Um, if I didn't say already, these are mostly Chalk Hill Blues. There may be a few other blue species mixed in. Um, if I miss them, then point them out to me. Feel free to comment and tell me. But I'm pretty sure most of these are Chalk Hill Blues. Um, uh, here you can actually see, like, there's another male coming in to try and join them. And uh, I don't think they're particularly pleased about that, but there you go that's the natural world for you and again these two are being well they're about to be interrupted actually there's there's four butterflies in this picture just below the bottom one you can see there's like another antennae and legs sticking out so yeah I think it must be the pheromones from the females they like attract a lot of attention so there were a few like scuffles as well where you could see maybe up to five butterflies all just like rolling because they were all trying to mate with the same female um poor thing but yeah there we go uh, and that's another picture as you can see where you can yeah you can see where they're where they're doing the deed <laughs> um this one is one so i was t i've i've been taking these with a 40 millimeter lens and you have to get really really close with that macro lens um although i don't think for photographers out there i don't think it's a true macro but whatever i love it it gets me close it gets cool pictures um this guy was kind of in i, I was in I was in the process of being on the floor and taking these pictures and this one nearly got crushed. So I've just gently relocated it with my finger and thought I'd get a shot of it while I did it. And to be honest, it doesn't look too happy with me, but you know, it's better than crushing it. Um, what we got next? Ah, so I think this is, I think this is a female Chalk Hill Blue. For a little while, I thought it was a brown Argus, but from the book I have, I don't think we get them this far south in England. Um, if anyone knows for sure, do comment and let me know because I would love to know. Um, but I love the 
obviously it's not the best like composed photo there's a lot going on here very distracting things but i love the shine in the wings i think it's just so pretty um <laughs> this was such a good day for birds as well um um, here we have a raven, so you, it's not as obvious just from this. Bleh, it's not as obvious from this angle, but when you look at ravens, you'll see compared to crows, crows have like a fan tail that kind of goes out like this, but ravens, their tail kind of ends in like a point like that most of the time. Um, there's other ways to identify them, but that's the one I always tend to go to. Um, they're also massive, and up on these cliffs, they fly right next to you, and yeah, you can just you can just see how different they are to crows. They're massive. Um, this one was obviously diving into a mating, I think it's like a mating ritual they do. This was really cool. So within 10 seconds, I saw the ravens and then a buzzard flew past and then the kestrels flew by. And here we can see obviously like the kestrel is mobbing the buzzard to tell it to just leave. Um, I think they have a nest near there and they're probably extra defensive because they have chicks. Um, and it's always funny seeing like the bigger bird is always the one that's getting mobbed by the smaller birds, but I don't think I've ever seen a kestrel mobbing a buzzard, so that was really cool. And then as all this action was happening, who saw this pass but the peregrine falcon? I love these birds. I think they are, like, I mean, I love all birds, but they are, when, when you see them in this condition, in these conditions, right, you've got to get the context that this was a high cliff, like, really, really always high winds. All the other birds are kind of like, their wings are going and they're trying to keep the balance. Peregrine falcon flies through and just cuts through the wind. And it's not even, it's so solid. It doesn't waver. It's just so perfectly aerodynamic that it just cuts through. And they're just incredible. And I love seeing them in these conditions. It's it's brilliant. Um, another shot of the kestrel here. I adore these birds. Like They're just so pretty. Um, and this kind of gives a better context of where we were. So, you know, you can see, yeah, you can see the scene in the cliff. There's nothing more I really need to say here. Um, <laughs> but the cool thing, actually, I will go back. Um, the cool thing about, so you know when kestrels hover, basically, if you've seen them hover, you'll notice that they keep their head perfectly still and they move the rest of their body, flapping their wings to hover. In these conditions, because of the updraft, they don't flap their wings. They just hover, like they just use the updraft, the wind coming up the cliffs off the sea to just like hold their wings straight and they don't really move them much but again like their wings move slightly to adjust and their heads stay still it's really cool um and here's one so that was probably was that a male before oh no i think these are the same bird um so the males are a different color but the females are always quite brown and this is one just diving down and it's nice to kind of get a little bit of the like the cliffs and there's a building in the background there Ooh should probably let that one load properly. I'm doing this through Lightroom, so they're taking... This one's not loaded properly. That's fine. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, yeah, this one was diving. And I didn't see it with any prey. I like this shot specifically because it has the bee in and also the house. Um, I don't know what the bee was trying to do, whether it was trying to, you know, fend it off. But it seemed to follow it for a while. Um, and I don't know, this one's just kind of humorous to me because it's just fully dived into the bush. Um, other birds we've got, we, wow, I, I mean, I didn't expect to see this on this morning, but um, <laughs> yeah, Falna. Falna are fantastic seabirds. They have an incredible, like, soaring motion. It's very smooth. They don't flap their wings that often. Um, or they do it in short bursts and then they glide. And as you can see here, we have a lovely little chick and I've never seen a former chick before. And I love it because it's kind of ugly and it's still very cute, but just, it just that, that nose, I mean, it's so sweet. Um, and yeah, a very attentive parent there. And then I walked all the way, like I walked for miles that day and because I had the camera, it took longer than it should have. So, <laughs> so yeah. I was knackered by this point, but I got one last shot of some birds, and I am pretty sure they are linnets, but because they're quite young and are quite, like, straggly looking, I'm actually doubting my ID ability a little bit here, but I think they're linnets. If everyone, anyone wants to correct me, go ahead, but I'm pretty sure these are young linnets. So that is, I think, everything from that shoot, and I'm already near enough 10 minutes. Um, 
I was going to go on and talk about more, but I think I'll leave it there today and I'll come back to a few more shoots that I've done recently. Um, yeah, anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this style of video. People always say you need to tell stories with your pictures and for me, I, I think this is the, the best way for me to do it. I think it will be easier than blogging and I think it'll be more fun. So if you enjoyed this and would like to see more of what I do, I'm kind of going to just be experimenting on this platform on YouTube. Um, do like the video, do subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know which photos or photo you like the most. And yeah, hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching. See you soon.